Now, here in Nigeria, a new project is underway to turn food waste into a valuable material used to restore the environment and remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Waste from the cassava plant is being used to produce biochar. That's a charcoal-like product which can remove contamination from water, enrich soil and capture carbon. Nigeria is the world's largest producer of cassava, growing almost 60 million tons of the crop each year. The project is being carried out by Teesside University, the University of Ibadan and Niji Group, a Nigerian agricultural company. Well, let's bring in Dr. Tanaz Pak, an associate professor in energy and environmental engineering who's leading the Teesside University team. She joins us from Budapest in Hungary. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us. We do appreciate the time. First of all, tell us more about biochar. What is it and why is it useful? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, good evening to you and your viewers. Uh, biochar is a charcoal-like material. It's got, in simple terms, it's a charcoal material that's got so many holes and pores in it. It's a porous material. Um, so it's got lots of surface area. So it's very useful if you are uh, wanting to remove contamination from water um, or enrich soil and add um, to um, its properties that are useful for um, growing crops. Um, and I know in Nigeria, there's lots of problem with water contamination, organic contaminants, as, as well as inorganic uh, contaminants. Um, and um, obviously, there's lots of waste available as well, as, as you briefly mentioned, from plantation and agricultural waste um, that can be turned into biochar using a process as a thermal process that um, we have basically uh, planned in this project. Um, so that would help um, the company that's producing um, this waste to try and get rid of um, the problem in terms of waste management, but also produce a new material that can be um, sold as a new solution for um, soil enrichment and um, water treatment. And also for um, sequestration. Nigeria being net zero um, targets between 2050 and 2070, the promise is, and this is a carbon sequestration technology. So it will allow you to um, lock carbon into soil for many centuries. So it, it's a solution that will help you avoid releasing CO2 or capture it for, for long term. You've kind of galloped ahead ahead of the rest of us there, because obviously you've got all the, the knowledge and we're desperately trying to follow. Um, but I, I mean, I, I might return to some of the things you mentioned there um, briefly, but I mean, taking it in bite-sized chunks, your project is looking at how waste from the cassava plants can be used to produce biochar. That's one. What is the benefit of using the cassava root in that way? I know you touched on it, but just expand on that a bit. So you can use um, in just many different types of biomass. Biochar would require some sort of a biomass and a, um, a plant um, that would allow you to, to increase the temperature um, and decompose this biomass into different fractions. There's a solid fraction that we call biochar and there's bio oil that you can collect. And uh, basically that's a sustainable oil that you can use. So you, you could you could be looking at, for instance, wheat straw, if you have lots of that. It, uh, the beauty of biochar is that it really looks at what you have locally available to you as the waste material. And then it you take that and decompose it and produce the biochar material. Now, the quality of this biochar is obviously different because you've used different um, input material, feedstock material. Um, but we looked at um, the problem that Nigeria has in terms of water treatment and the CO2 carbon sequestration promises uh, and soil, which is what we look at everywhere, really, internationally. And we looked at what is available. 
um, in Nigeria and for Ibadan and, and that region, obviously, because of Niji's, the, the company that we work with, um, they, they, they are, are um, growing lots of uh, plantation of cassava and they have this waste problem. So we, we looked at that and we said, OK, let's take the cassava peel and the fibers that are produced as the cassava is processed to produce the, the edible of a powder um so so that that's what is available at that at that part of the world it could be somewhere else in the uk for instance we are looking at wheat straw where we are in teesside um if you have extra amounts of algae for instance you could use algae as as the biomass which is what we are using in, in jamaica so um it, it, I, I don't know if that answered your question but it, it yes, is a very it, local it, solution it, it actually so does Nigeria, um, it, it it does. It so so let, let me present. try and uh, let me try and move ahead here because we're we're fast running out of time. It, it sounds very interesting, by the way, um, and and this is environmentally friendly because when you talk about something that's associated with coal or charcoal, I mean people automatically think dirty fuel and pollution. That's it. So if um, you think about, um, obviously, the, the uh, traditional processes where you actually do this in an unregulated sort of manner and the process is, is not really looked at, um, that there is a traditional way of doing it it could be that you're basically releasing whatever that's coming off um, of that process and and it can cause uh, pollution we have a review on this so we're well aware of the pollutions but um, the pyrolysis process that is used to produce oh dear Oh. turn that into bio oil. The bio oil that's produced uh, sometimes requires some sort of upgrading. So it's not as um, in terms of properties, it cannot compete directly with, for instance, crude oil, but it could be worked on to uh, basically, um, it's a clean um, alternative. So um, in summary, uh, you, you need to actually do it with respect to with respect to the, to the environment, you, you have to plan for it. You have to think about the pro what's going into it and how you're going to capture um, the, the the effluent gas, so um, it's not going to um, basically harm the environment. Well, I've got a couple more questions for you, but unfortunately, the line does not appear to be holding up, and we, you've you've broken up a number of times. So sadly, oh, we have to end the conversation. But um, I know that you're doing this in collaboration with the University of Ibadan and the Niji Agricultural That's Group, right. which is a Nigerian agricultural group. And uh, we hope to hear from you That's soon right. enough about when we're likely to see the first production of biochar emerge from this. Project. Thank you very much indeed. Dr. Tanos Pack is an associate professor in energy and environmental engineering, and she's leading the Teesside University team who are doing that project in collaboration with uh, the Nigerian institutions.